Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your bro, hope you're doing well. And in this video, we're going to create a game of Snake using Python. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. First thing we should do is import from tkinter as well as the random module. And let's define all of the different classes and functions that we'll need. So let's create a class for our snake object as well as our food object. So for the time being, I'm just going to write pass for my classes. We'll fill these in later. So we have class snake and class food. And let's define all of the different functions that we'll need. So let's say we have a function named next turn. Change direction. Check collisions. And lastly, game over. Okay, for change direction, I'm going to have one parameter, a new direction. Now, when I create a game, I like to place a bunch of constants at the top of my game. Constants are variables that you do not want to change later. They're kind of like the settings. However, in Python, there are no constants compared to other programming languages. So we're just going to create a bunch of variables that will behave like them. So constants are values we do not want to change and they're kind of like the game settings. And I place them at the top for convenience. And the naming convention for a constant is that all the letters are uppercase. So these will be settings like the game width, the speed, etc. So let's say the width of our game will be 700, but feel free to take the liberty to pick whatever size you want. So we have game width, game height, I'll set this to 700 as well, so it's a square. Let's say we have a speed, the speed of the snake. How often will our canvas update? So let's say 50, but the lower the number, the faster the game. And a space size. How large are the items in our game, like the food and body parts of the snake? So I'm going to pick 50, but you can change this. And body parts. How many body parts does our snake have when we begin a game? Let's say three. How about a snake color? You can pick a color name, you can use RGB values, or you can use a hexadecimal value. So I'm going to pick green, 00FF00, but you can pick any color you want. How about food color equals red? And that is FF0000. And what about a background color for the canvas? Background color. I'll pick black. So that is six zeros. Feel free to mess with some of these colors too. So we have a green snake. Our food is going to be red and our background is going to be black. So that is all of the constants for our game. But you can feel free to adjust them if you like. Let's head down to the bottom and make our window. So we have window equals TK. And at the very end, we should have window.main loop. Let's set a title for this window. Window.title snack game. Okay, fine, I'll spell it right. Snake game. And if you do not want your window to be resizable, you can use resizable. And then you have to pass in false twice. It's kind of strange, but it's how it is. Okay, we should have a small window and we cannot resize this even if we tried. Okay, let's create a score label, but we probably need a score first. So let's say score equals zero and an initial direction. Direction equals, let's say down. Now let's create a score label. So let's say label equals label we're adding our label to our window. Let's set the text equal to score colon. Then I'm going to use the format method and we will pass in our score, whatever it is. And I'll set a font, pick whatever font you prefer. And 40 is a decent size. And then I'm going to pack this label. 
Let's test it. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We'll need to create a canvas. Canvas equals canvas. We're adding it to our window. I'm going to set the background color equal to our background constant. I'm going to set our height equal to the game height and the width equal to the game width that we set. And we need to pack this canvas dot pack. And we should have a game board. I'm going to try and center this window when it appears. So we can do that using a few lines of code. The first thing we'll do is update our window so that it renders. And then we need to find some dimensions. So let's say the window width equals window dot w info width. And window height equals window dot w info height. We'll need our screen width equals window dot screen width and screen height equals window dot w info screen height. Where is it? There it is. Okay, then we need to see how much we're going to adjust the position of our window. So let's say x equals screen width divided by two minus window width divided by two. And do the same thing for y, except this will be screen height and window height, and that will be y. Okay, then we need to set the geometry. Window dot geometry. We're going to use an f string. So let's set the window width times window height. And then add plus x plus y. So when we pass in x and y, these cannot be floats. They have to be whole integers. So let's add a cast around x and y. OK, now this should be fairly close to the center. Yeah, that's not too bad. Now, when we begin a new game, we should create a snake object as well as a food object. Snake equals snake and call the snake constructor and food equals food. OK, let's fill in our food class first because I think that'll be easier than our snake class. So let's head to the food class. Now, let's create an init method. So def init. This will construct a food object for us and we need to place our food object randomly. So for the x coordinate, let's say x equals random dot rand int, and we need a range. The range is going to be zero comma. Now with our game board, I view it like a chessboard. There's a given amount of spaces. So 700 divided by our space size is 14 possible spots on the x axis and then 14 possible spots on the y-axis. So I need to pick one of these spots randomly. So let's say game width divided by our space size. So we'll get a random number between 0 and 14. However, this should be exclusive. So let's say minus 1. And for good measure, I'm just going to add a set of parentheses around this. OK, and then we'll convert this to pixels. So let's multiply all of this by our space size, the size of each item in the game. And we'll do the same thing for y, but change game width to height.
Okay, we should be good. All right, now let's set the coordinates. Let's say self dot coordinates equals a list of X and Y, and that's it. Uh, but make sure you spell coordinates right. Now we need to draw our food object on our canvas. Canvas dot create oval. You can pick a square too if you like. We need a starting corner that will be where X and Y is and an ending corner. So that will be X and Y plus our space size, the size of an object in a game. So X plus space size y plus space size and you can set a fill color too fill will be our food color that we declared and i recommend adding a tag as well that'll make it easy to delete this object so tag will equal the string food now let's just test this so we should have a random circle or a square, if you picked a square, appear someplace at some spot on my game board. Cool, seems like it's working. Let's work on the snake class next. Our snake class will need a constructor. And we will set a body size equal to our body parts. We'll need a list of coordinates. We'll fill this in later. And a list of square graphics. So that will be a list. Okay, so we need to create a list of coordinates. We can use a for loop for that. So let's say for i in range 0 through body parts we will take self dot coordinates and append a new list and the coordinates for each body part at the start of the game will be zero zero so that our snake will appear in the top left corner now we'll need to create some squares okay so for x y in self dot coordinates and remember that we have a list of lists so that's why we're using x y in self coordinates we'll create a square equals canvas dot create rectangle so we need a starting corner that will be x and y then x plus our space size, the size of each object in the game. Let me use the constant though. Space size y plus space size. And let's set a fill color equal to our snake color. All right, and let's set a tag for convenience. Tag equals a string of snake. Okay, so we have a list of squares and we can append each square into our list. Self dot squares dot append and pass in whatever square that you create. So we have a snake that has a body size, a list of coordinates, and a list of square graphics. Now after testing this, we should have the head of our snake in the top left corner. And now we just need the snake to move in a given direction every turn. So the initial direction is down, but we'll be able to change that later. So let's head to the next turn function. And there's actually two things we'll need as parameters that I forgot to fill in. Snake as well as food and we will call this function when we begin our game. So let's unpack the head of the snake. So that's x comma y equals snake dot coordinates at index 
of zero, so that's the head of the snake. The coordinates will be stored in X and Y. So let's check to see if our direction, our initial direction, equals up. And we'll need some else if statements. We'll fill this in in just a moment. Else if our direction equals down, then left and then right. Okay, if our direction is up, then let's take our y coordinate for the head of our snake minus equals our space size so that we move one space up. And then down is plus equals space size. Left is x minus equals space size. And lastly, right is x plus equals space size. Okay, then we need to call the next turn function again for the next turn. So we can use window dot after we need a time. So let's say our game speed, we're going to call the next turn function and we need to pass in our arguments of snake and food. Snake food. Oh, and make sure you're not actually calling the next turn function inside of the after method. You just have to write the function name of next turn without the parentheses. Okay, so let's update the coordinates for the head of the snake and write that before we move on to the next turn. So snake dot coordinates. And we will insert a new set of coordinates after updating one of them. So zero will be the index, the head of the snake, and we will insert X and Y coordinates at this new location. Now we're going to create a new graphic for the head of the snake. Square equals canvas dot create rectangle, pass in X and Y for the starting corner of our rectangle and the ending corner will be x plus our space size, y plus our space size. And then I will add a fill color of snake color. And then we need to update our snake's list of squares. So that will be snake dot squares and insert at index zero, a new square that we create. Okay, let's test this. One last thing that we'll need to get this program to run is that after you create your snake and food object, we should call the next turn function and pass in our snake and food object. So we should be able to test this. So our snake is going to move, but we need to delete the last body part in our snake within the next turn function, but before we update to the next turn, let's delete the last body part of our snake. So delete snake dot coordinates at negative index of one. That is the last set of coordinates. We will update our canvas, canvas dot delete snake dot squares an index of negative one. And lastly, delete snake, the list of squares at index of negative one. So it should appear that our snake is moving. Cool. We need some controls for our snake. So at the bottom of our program, let's bind some keys. Let's do that here. So window dot bind, let's bind the left arrow key and we will use a lambda. The argument is event and we will call the change direction function and pass in 
the word left. Okay, then we have to do the same thing for the other directions. So we have right, pass in right, up, pass in up, down, pass in down. Let's head to the change direction function. We need to access our direction, global direction. This is the old direction. If our new direction that is passed in is equal to left, and if our old direction, just direction, does not equal right because we do not want to go backwards and do a 180 degree turn, then we will set our direction equal to our new direction. And we just need to repeat this for the other directions for new direction. And I'm going to change this to else if. Else if new direction is right and our direction is not already left. Then we have up. If our direction is not down, and down if our direction is not up. Okay, so we should be able to change the direction of our snake. Sweet. Okay, we need to eat that pesky apple next, so let's work on that. There's nothing else that we need to change within the change direction function, so I'm going to minimize this function and head to the next turn function. We'll place an if statement here. If x, remember that we unpacked the coordinates for the head of the snake. If x, the x coordinate for the head of the snake is equal to our food objects coordinates at index of zero. That's the x coordinate for our food object and y is equal to food coordinates at index of one. That means they're overlapping. Let's take our score and increment it by one. And change our label, label.config. The text will equal score, and then I'm going to use the format method and pass in my new score. Let's delete our food object, and we gave our food object a tag, so we can just use the name of the tag to delete it and create a new food object. Then I'm going to write this part of our program within an else statement. We will only delete the last body part of our snake if we did not eat a food object. Okay, let's test it again. So I have three body parts. Now I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. You can see that the score is going up too. Okay, let's work on collisions next because I should not be able to go off screen like this. There's one thing that we're going to change. So let's add an if statement that will check collisions. This will return true or false if we detect a collision and pass in our snake object. If there is a collision, we'll call the game over function. Else, we will update to the next turn. Okay, let's fill in the 
check collisions function and we no longer need our function of next turn. Actually, we don't need these classes either, so I'll minimize them. Okay, check collisions. So it looks like we will need a parameter of snake. So be sure to set that. Let's unpack the head of the snake. X, Y equals snake dot coordinates at index of zero. And let's check to see if we cross the left or right border of the game. If X is less than zero or X is greater than or equal to our game width, then return true. I think for testing purposes, I'm going to print something to the console window. Game over. Let's test it. Okay, I'm going to go over to the right border, game over, and our game stopped. Let's go over the left, game over. Cool, so we know that it's working. Okay, let's do the same thing for Y. We can use else if here. If Y is less than zero, or Y is greater than or equal to our game height, let's print game over and return true. And we should probably test it. Okay, I'm going up, game over, and let's go down. Game over. So what if our snake touches its tail or another body part? So let's say for i, actually i isn't too descriptive. Let's say for every body part in snake.coordinates. So we're going to set this to everything after the head of the snake. We're going to check to see if any of the coordinates are matching. If x is equal to body part at index 0, and y is equal to body part at index 1, then return true and I'll print game over to test it print game over otherwise we can return false there are no collisions I think I'm going to change the size of the snake to 10 okay let's run into each other cool game over and the last thing that we need to do is to fill in the game over function because it looks like everything else is fine. So head to the game over function, take your canvas and delete all. And we'll create some game over text. Canvas, create, text. I would like this in the center of my canvas I'll take canvas w info width divided by two comma canvas w info height divided by two. I'm going to put some of this on the next line for readability. I'll set a font, pick whatever font that you want. We'll need some text text equals game over pick a color reds decent I'll add a tag to for convenience game over and that should be it for the game over function I'm going to change the body parts of the snake back to what it was originally and we should probably test that game over screen all right it appeared Okay, so let's change some of these settings around. You can create a larger game board, let's say 1000 by 700. That still works. You can slow down the speed or speed it up. So 100 will be about half as fast. It's going pretty slow now. But what if we set it to 20? You 
can change the space size. So everything is a lot smaller now, including the food object. We can change the body parts. What about 20 to begin with? That's fairly excessive. I'll change that back to three. You can change the snake color. Let's say we would like a blue snake. So that is for a hex color. Four zeros and then two Fs. You can change the food color. So let's say we would like a yellow food object. So that would be four Fs and then two zeros. Kind of resembles the Python logo, that color scheme. You can change the background color too. So let's say all white, that would be six Fs. I do not like that. Go back. Delete, delete, delete. All right, well, that should be everything. Let's run this game one last time. Well, everybody, that is a very basic game of Snake for beginners. I will post all of this code to the comment section down below. But yeah, that's a basic game of Snake using Python. Hey, you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. If you learned something new, then help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.